morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Bulk Milk. We're going to give about a minute or two here just to let everyone roll in. About 11.01 here, my time, Eastern time. I'm here in Massachusetts and excited to have you all joining me from across the country. about one more minute here while we're waiting for everyone to get here again thank you guys all for being here for our, our bulk milk webinar all right well let's get started and we'll just let other people get here as they get here uh, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Allison Johnson. I'm the Director of Grant and Online Programs here at the Chef Ann Foundation, and I'm here to talk to you guys about our brand new bulk milk granting program for schools. We're going to have a quick agenda today. We're going to run through the program, and then we'll quickly go through the application steps. This webinar is being recorded, and we will send it out to all the registrants after the webinar sometime next week, and we'll also have it posted on the website for everyone to view. <clears throat> we'll be taking questions at the end of the webinar, so please save your questions. I'm sorry, you can add your questions to the Q&A section at any point, but we will go through all the questions once we go through the program and the application steps. So thank you again so much, and welcome to Bulk Milk. We say less waste, great taste for Bulk Milk. Oops. And there we go. Quick program overview for y'all. Bulk Milk is a granting program that launched this month with the mission of donating bulk milk equipment to U.S. schools to support reduction of packaging and liquid waste and support environmental sustainability in schools. This is a healthy school lunch initiative founded by the Chef Ann Foundation, and it's open to districts nationwide thanks to generous support from the Posner Foundation. Targeted outcomes for the program are to reduce packaging and milk waste, to lower school costs for milk purchasing, disposal, and refrigeration with the hopes that cost savings can be used to procure organic milk, to improve student nutrition by increasing overall milk consumption, and to assist with implementing the operational changes to support bulk milk. Well, what's the problem with bottles and cartons? Great question. Well, milk cartons represent up to 50% of a school's trash volume, and 45 million gallons of milk are being wasted every school year. That's about 32 cartons per student every year. And that represents not only a loss of nutrition for students, but also wasted environmental and financial resources that go into producing, transporting, cooling, and storing milk. But there is a bulk milk solution. Milk waste from bulk milk dispensers is much lower, about four and a half cartons per student. And that helps us save about 248 gallons of water and 30 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions per student every year. Now, when talking about the 49 and a half million students attending K-12 schools, that would be the equivalent of saving 54,485 Olympic swimming pools worth of water, as well as taking off 145,000 gas powered vehicles from the road every year. Significant, significant savings indeed. There are many benefits to bulk milk dispensers, including the fact that they're a flexible, low waste approach to complying with the free and reduced lunch standards, they help increase student ownership of their choices in portion size. Milk stays colder and at a constant temperature in bulk milk dispensers. There's increased consumption of milk by students and reduced milk waste. This can help with increased meal participation. There's significant reduction of liquid waste, which means that there's reduced staff efforts for waste removal, as well as lower disposal costs reduced energy costs, and reduced school environmental impacts and greenhouse emissions. 
as Rita Denton, the director of school nutrition at the Mansfield Independent School District in Mansfield, Texas said, since switching to bulk milk, we've noticed increases in consumption and decreases in waste. The kids love the taste and enjoy drinking from a cup instead of a carton. Our average milk waste was about half a cup per child. And with bulk milk, that has decreased to less than an eighth of a cup per child. We're also seeing savings from purchasing bulk milk instead of cartons. $285 a week at our pilot school in savings. Additionally, there have been no issues with the reusable cups. Students return the cups to a kitchen window after discarding their trays, and the staff washes the cups for their next use. So what comes in the grant package? Well, there'll be a three valve bulk milk dispenser like you see here with a dispenser stand that's not pictured, reusable nine ounce tumblers that you see down in the bottom right hand corner, shuttles for the milk bibs in the top right hand corner, marketing resources, including the dispenser magnet that you see on the front of the dispenser, which will also have side panels as well, milk labels and milk sign holders that you see below the dispenser a pull-up banner, stickers and posters, as well as program resources, including standard operating procedures, a program guide, training videos, and more. An example of some of the resources, first, a student informational poster on the left to show them how much to take, which is they can take what they want and encouraging them to drink what they take. Also a nice poster about environmental sustainability, showing students and staff how much water is being saved with bulk milk. Grant eligibility. As I mentioned earlier, this is open nationally and it's open to K to 12 school districts that participate in the national school lunch program. They need to have a minimum enrollment of hundred students. Schools must have a dishwasher to wash the reusable cups and they must be able to identify their supplier for procuring milk in bibs. And as a reminder, milk bibs are the three to five gallon bags that fit in the milk dispensers. Grant timeline. The grant just opened May 16th and will close on July 31st of this year. Grantees will be notified in August and grants will start to be awarded and shipped out in September and October this fall. As we said, less waste and great taste. As you guys can see here, this is the direct link to our program resources and application. And you can also use this QR code. We'll take you to the same spot. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Here's our landing spot on the lunchbox. You can scroll down here for lots of different information, the impact and opportunity, key benefits, program resources, eligibility, apply now and FAQs. We're gonna jump right into the application so that we can go through that quickly together. So when you click apply now, it's gonna take you to our program portal. If you scroll down here, you're gonna see all of our open applications. Right now, we're looking at the bulk milk application. So you'll go down here where it says, click here to register and apply. We'll click. This window will populate for you to either register or log in. If you have previously had an application submitted with the Chef Ann Foundation, you can use the login information that you've already created, or you could click new user at the bottom here. This is where you fill in your name, create a password, and click sign up. If you've already created an account, but you can't remember what it is, you can put in what you remember, Put your email address and click find your account and that will let you reset your password. I'm going to go back to the login page here because I've already got a login. Entered my login and password. Logging in. Okay. Back here. Click on bulk milk again. Great. So this is going to open up our bulk milk application. On this starter page here, you'll see again, the application guidelines with eligibility that we just discussed and a couple of application steps. It says to complete the online application, including the verification form, which we'll see at the end, which needs to be signed by the food service director and the superintendent, very important. 
It says you'll receive an email acknowledgement that your application has been received and is being reviewed. Awarded districts will receive an email not notification and be asked to confirm their shipping details. At that point, your bulk milk grant package will be ordered and delivered to your schools. At some time within one year following the, <laughs> excuse me, following one year of receiving the grant, you will be asked to complete an evaluation. So all we need to do right now, scroll down to the bottom. We're going to click right here, apply. This is going to ask what district you're applying for. And this is where you'll type in the name of your district. I'm just gonna type in a make-believe district here. I'll name it Test Valley. You'll type in the district city, the district state, and your tax ID number. And then you'll click next. If you get a message like this, it says, looks like your district needs a closer look from our team, submit the form below. All you need to do is continue to the application. That just means we, we internally need to look at the name of your district to make sure that it is matching with others that we have already in the system, or if we need to assign it a new organization name. So there's nothing else that you need to do. This is just a message, whether it's accepted your school or not, you'll continue to the application. We'll let that load, and then we're going to scroll down here. This is where the application begins. There are a couple of pre-populated items. Your application dates are going to be pre-filled with the date that you started, which is today, 531. Then we've got the name of the program. It's going to pre-fill your name as your contact and the bulk milk here under the funding request name. And your, the applying contact, again, will pre-fill your name as the person that's logged into this application. Below that is where you'll start filling in information about the applicant. To add new items, you can just click on this little pen icon here. That will open up the field for you to be able to enter. So you'll enter your title as the applicant. You could enter superintendent. Superintendent, <clears throat> oops, anything like that. We can enter phone number. We'll enter the name of the organization, which is the name of your school. Then you'll want to enter all the information about the food service director here. We'll scroll down, scroll down to district details. You'll enter information, your tax ID, district website and phone number. District type is asking you to identify whether you're a public, private, or a charter school. Number of schools in the district, district enrollment, district county. And if you're looking for more information, a lot of the times here at the beginning of the question is only going to have a few items. If there's more information, you can hover over this little eye icon. And if there's more information, that'll pop up in that little blue pop up window. Scroll down. And just as a reminder, too, if you are going to start this application and step away, you'll want to click save at each point where you are stepping away from the application. There is no automatic save here. So if you do um, leave or walk away from the application and don't save it, <clears throat> what you filled will not have saved for you. Let's continue scrolling down. We'll enter our district demographic information. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our planned implementation date will go here. And then all of the application questions are going to be here. Free and reduced percentage, average daily participation, questions about facilities to wash, bulk milk etiquette and hygiene, what the plan is. Again, you can hover over, it'll give you information like this. Do you have a plan to instruct students on bulk milk dispenser etiquette and hygiene? Things like that. So again, all the questions are here. We'll scroll down to the bottom. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Go down to the bottom here. These last two pieces here are gonna be a district preparedness statement. It says, please state how your district has prepared for implementing this program and what the district's goals are. So this is just a little information for us to understand what you've been doing in the sustainability realm up until this point, what your goals are with the bulk milk program going forward. You'll identify how many machines you're looking for, the names of the schools that you're looking to implement bulk milk in, You'll read the terms and conditions here, check that box. And finally down here is the verification documentation. It says, please click here to download the agreement. You'll click there, which will download. Open up here. You'll wanna print this out or sign electronically. And then, oops, get this out of the way here. One second. You'll upload your file here. 
And then finally, you'll be able to submit your application. Once you've submitted your application, you will receive an email that says your application has been submitted. And I will also receive that same email. All right, we're going to stop here. That is everything on the application. I'm going to just bring us back here to the end of the presentation. And I'm going to open up for questions. I'm going to go into the Q&A here and start at the top. So like I said, if anyone has questions, feel free to add to the Q&A section. I'm going to go through these one at a time. And if for some reason we don't get to all of the questions before the end of our time here, you're welcome to email me at bulkmilk at chefannfoundation.org. And I believe we're going to add that to the Q&A section at the bottom too. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to see that email for contact. Again, thank you guys so much. I'm going to go through the questions right now. First question, how can we convince our local creameries to move their packaging setups to bibs, to bibs over milk cartons? And that's a great question. That's something that we are currently working on too. We've been working with the dairy councils to encourage more suppliers to make this available. But I would say the best thing that you can do is work with them directly and work with your lo local dairy council to talk to them about what your sustainability initiatives are and what your goals are. And the fact that this is something that you're going to be moving to and that you really want their support so that you can continue to give them the business that they deserve. Next question is, will you be providing the research links to the info that was shared? Yes, everything that I talked about in the presentation, you can see on the, um, the bulk milk landing page that I showed you. So if you click that link at the bottom of the screen, or if you use that QR code there, it's gonna take you to the lunchbox and you'll be able to see all that information, links to some of the reports that we referenced, like the World Wildlife Foundation report and other information from other schools. Great question. All right, next question is, how do we implement milk dispensers if we can't get the bulk milk bladders or the bulk milk bibs? We've worked hard to get these dispensers, but we can't get the milk. I understand that that's definitely a holdup for some schools right now. And as I mentioned above, we are continuing to work with dairy councils across the country to get more availability. And it is going to be a work in progress. So like I suggested is work with your dairy council, work with your suppliers, and we're just going to have to keep pushing for it. The more support we get from schools, the more schools that get on board, the more that suppliers are going to want to make this available to continue to keep schools as one of their, their main buyers. Next question, are we limited to these dispensers only? For this program, yes, this is the type of dispenser that we have for, for granting for this program. If you were going to start a program of your own, if you had your own funds to start, you could definitely procure different dispensers. If you had questions about other options, you can definitely reach out to me directly and we can talk about what those other options are. Next question was why three valves instead of two or one valve? Um, we wanted to have one valve wouldn't make it available to have the two varieties that schools need to offer. Um, as part of the National School Lunch Program, you do have to have two different varieties of milk available for students. And having the three valves allows it to be a quicker process for students to get through the line. The more um, options that the students have to pick up their milk, the quicker that they can get through. So having the three valves, again, was just a way to get more students through the line and accommodate that quicker lunch period. Next question was, where do the milk slash cups have to be in the point of sale? Great question. You can see this in the FAQ section as well, but we do recommend having the milk dispenser before the point of sale, but at the end of your line, so that students typically already have three of their five components once they get to the milk dispenser, allowing them to take exactly the amount of milk that they want. But you do want to have it um, placed prior to the point of sale so that in the case that there are students that are using that cup of milk as their third component, you'll want to be able to identify um, with a school food operator that they have that full eight ounces. I'll grab a sip of water here. All right, next question. If the school does 
off-site dishwashing, would they still be eligible? Yes, as long as there is a dishwasher to wash those reusable cups. We just didn't want to be incurring any additional staff labor by having to wash any cups by hand. Great question. All right, next question. Can we use this to serve non-fat chocolate milk? Yes, you're welcome to serve any variety of milk that is allowable under the National School Lunch Program regulations. Is there a requirement for the cups being used at the same time as the dispenser is starting to be used? So yes, um, we do want the reusable cups and the dispenser to be used at the same time so that we're not creating more package waste. The goals of the program are re to reduce liquid and package waste. So if there were compostable cups being used, that would still be creating um, package waste, which we're trying to avoid. So we are looking for programs that are starting with reusable cups and the dispensers at the same time, yes. <clears throat> Next question is, does the machine disperse the required serving of milk per student in accordance with the meal pattern? So no, these are self-serve machines where the student will push their cup up against their bar and the milk will dispense while the cup is being pushed up against it. And they'll be able to select the amount of milk that they want. And as I mentioned before, if you're doing offer versus serve and a student only has two of their three components when they're choosing milk, an operator will need to identify that they have selected that full eight ounces of milk. And that's why we do have a couple of posters to help show the students what to take, which again, you can view by clicking on that link and going to the lunchbox and seeing all of our program resources. Next question is, how many students can the one three valve dispenser realistically serve during a lunch period? Should larger schools worry about needing to purchase more dispensers to really switch over? That's a great question. And a school that has greater than 500 students can absolutely request more than one dispenser for a single school to be able to make sure that they can get all students through the lunch period in a, um, in a good amount of time. Next question is, how many cups does a school receive? I believe we're granting out around um, I'll have to look at the exact number, but I believe it's around 300 cups. On the application, if we are only wanting to place milk dispensers in a portion of the schools within the district, do we still report the number of all schools in the district or only the ones we are hoping to place the dispensers in? Great question. So there is um, a question that asks about the number of schools in the district, but at the bottom, like I showed you, there was a spot to identify how many dispensers you're requesting and the names of the schools that you're looking to put those dispensers in. So you're not required to implement them in all of the schools in your district. You could do just one, you could do multiple, whatever is going to work for you at that time. <clears throat> in the district demographic info section, do you enter the percent of the student population that is of Yes, it is the percentages. Thank you, great question. The reusable cups are provided, correct? What are the size of the cups? They are nine ounce cups. So that allows the student to fill their cup to the eight ounces while still having a little bit of room at the top to help make it easier to get their cup back to their seat. Next question is, are there instructions for bulk milk and administrative reviews? There will be a program guide that's being developed right now that will be ready by the end of the summer prior to the grant packages being delivered. There's already standard operating procedures that are available to reference against as well. Again, if you click on that link, you'll be able to get to all those program resources. What is the biggest challenge that districts have in implementing bulk milk? You know, that's a great question. I think that something we're going to learn more about as we move forward into this program. This is a new program for us. There are definitely lots of schools that are on board with bulk milk and have been doing it for quite a few years, but we are going to be here to help schools work through whatever challenges that they face. Um, I guess I would say the biggest challenge is probably training if they don't have the resources, but I think that's why we Put a lot of time into putting together all the resources that a school is going to need. And if you click that link, you'll see that we've got a, a training video for the staff. We'll have a training video for the students by this fall. 
So it should be a really, really strong way to implement the program. Work with the staff, work with the students, get everyone on board at the same time. Once everybody's trained, it can be a really smooth running program. Next question is, is there a limit to how many dispensers a district can be awarded? There is not. You can ask for as many as your as many schools as you have, or again, like I said, if you have high enrollment schools, you can definitely ask for additional dispensers for certain schools as well. Any feedback from the pilot program with spillage of milk with the lower grades? What we've heard from schools is again, once you train the students, spillage really isn't a problem. This is a really great opportunity for students to develop those fine motor skills. And school is a place of learning. So once students know that this is the new way of doing things, this is the process, they're going to be on board and excited about it and happy to follow suit. How tall is the dispenser stand? Do you have a picture or can you describe it? I do. I don't have it on hand right now, but um, Patty, if you want to reach out to me directly, I can definitely provide you with some more specifics on the dispenser stand. I would say the stand is about, um, about three feet high. All right, next question. Where in the serving line does the, does the dispenser have to be placed? Doesn't it have to be the full eight ounces to credit in the National School Lunch Program? So we talked about this before, but I will go over this again really quickly. Um, you do not need to have a full eight ounces if a student already has chosen the three out of their five components under offer versus serve. So let's step back again under offer versus serve. You can have, you have your five components. You have protein, grains, milk, fruit, and vegetable. And if a student chooses three out of those five, the meal can be considered a reimbursable meal, as long as one of those five, or excuse me, one of those three is a fruit or vegetable in a half, at least a half a cup portion. So as far as milk goes, if a student already has three of their components, they've got a grain, they've got a protein, and they've got a vegetable, they could reach that milk dispenser and choose any amount of milk that they want, and it's still going to be creditable under National School Lunch Program. If a student only has two of their components at the time they get to the milk dispenser, then yes, they will need to take a full eight ounces. And that'll be a part of the training that you do with the students and a part of the actual lunch period where you'll need to have someone that works for the school food team to be able to identify that that student has that full eight ounces at that point. All right, next question. Can food service apply on behalf of a school? Yes, the food service department can absolutely apply. As you saw, we went through the application. You just need to have a signature on that verification statement from the food service director and from the superintendent. Is there an option to have dispensers with two versus three valves? Nancy, if that's something that you're definitely looking for, that is something that we could we could definitely possibly do. And you could put that on your application that that is what you're requesting. Next question, we've never worked with bulk milk and I'm concerned about my staff lifting the bibs. That's a great question, Patty. So if you see in the staff training video and in the standard operating procedures, you'll see that it is recommended that it is a two staff process, one staff, member for each side of the bib to ensure that it is safely and easily loaded into the bulk milk machines. I encourage you to watch the video and see how easy and fun it can be. Next question. We start school in August. If we receive a grant, is there any way to start the program earlier than September or October? I don't think that we will have the grants out sooner than that, but it would be definitely okay to start your program when you got when the grants go out. I know, realize that you'll be starting in August, but we won't be able to have those grants shipped out until September or October, unfortunately, this year. All right, next question. Our dairy says that getting the bags for the bulk milk are an issue. They cannot always guarantee delivery and may require school districts to pivot back to cartons with little to no notice. In some markets like ours, there's only one dairy and no other option for fresh milk. We understand that that may be the case. And if your dairy says that they do have the bulk milk bibs in general, I would encourage you to apply. 
and we can help you work through those situations as they come. Does this grant include the rack for the dishwasher for washing glasses? It does, and I apologize that I didn't mention that earlier. It will come with racks for the cups to go through the dishwashing machine as well. Can one of the three units hold water as a beverage choice? It absolutely could, as we talked about before, your bulk milk machine, or I should say your school lunch program needs to offer two varieties of milk. So since there are three dispensers in the unit, you could have milk in two and water in another. Can the grant offer 10 ounce cups versus nine ounce? The nine ounce cups from experience sloshes the milk when filling to the eight ounce. That's a great question. That's not something we'd heard before. We've been recommended from lots of different areas that the nine ounce cups are great, but I absolutely can look into the 10 ounce cup option for you, Cindy. All right, next question. Are the dispensers refrigerated? Is electrical required to plug in? Yes, they are refrigerated, which is what helps keep those milk bibs at the proper temperature and makes it taste even better than in the cartons. And yes, you will require an electrical plug. What sort of power does the machine require? Is it a standard electrical plug? Yes, it is a standard electrical plug. And Anne, if you have any other specific questions about electricity, I can answer those for you directly if you'd like to send me an email. All right, next question. What is the cleaning and sanitizing process like for these dispensers? Great question. You should be able to see that in the standard operating procedures and in the training video. And are, there'll be even more details coming up in the program guide that'll be available over the next month or so. Do the cups have lines, half cup and one cup to make it easy to identify how much milk was poured? They do not, but that's a really great idea and something I can pass along to the manufacturer. How many bibs would K-5 to with around 500 students, 300 meals per day go through in a week? That's another great question, Ben. And have to reach out to me directly because I will need to reach out to our equipment suppliers and try to get some information about that for you. I don't have exact numbers on that right now. Do you recommend allowing students to get refills on milk? Refills are okay as long as the student goes back up with a clean cup. So you'd want to make sure that the dirty cup gets brought back to the dishwashing area and that the student is provided with a clean cup before going back up to the milk dispenser. If the school is doing offsite washing, could a school get two sets of cups? Yes, Ben, that's definitely something we could discuss and you could put into your application in, in those notes sections. Next question, wondering on the choice between plastic cups versus stainless steel. Another great question, Nancy, and something that we hadn't considered before, but something we could definitely look into for options. Love the idea. Do you recommend elimination of flavored milk in your programming? We do encourage the use of unflavored milk, but you are absolutely welcome to serve whatever milk you choose that is approved under the National School Lunch Program requirements. We have grab and go breakfast that students eat in the classroom. How have districts using this bulk program handled a situation where the milk won't be consumed in the cafeteria? eating in the classroom, field trips, et cetera. I would say in those situations, you probably would need to have cartons on hand to be able to send out for those different, those different setups, but you could definitely have both. You could have your milk dispensers for lunch and you could send out cartons on certain field trip days or for certain eating in the classroom situations. How do you secure the machine while the cafeteria is closed? thinking of safety and security. Um, Patty, can you give me a little bit more information on what you're asking there? Do you mean um, secured against the wall or secured in terms of not be, no one being able to use it? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking there, but maybe you can give me a little more details and I'll come back to that one. And looks like the last question is, what if we have to sign a contract for the school year for milk now? That's a great question. And I would say if you, <clears throat> if you do have to sign a contract now, then this is something you might have to look at for next year. We're hoping to continue this program 
um, again, we'll hope hoping to be able to open it up again sometime next year. So if for some reason you aren't able to apply this year because you aren't able to get a contract for milk bibs, then I would encourage you to do the research for where you will be able to procure them and see if you can get that contract going for next year. All right, looks like we've gotten through all the questions here. Just going to, oh, nope, a couple more popped up. Probably referring to theft. Um, you could absolutely wheel having the machine on um, on a stand. You could move the whole stand with the machine into a locked area when you guys when school's not in session. Um, oh, and Patty added here too to make sure it's tamper proof and can be used only for meal programs rather than anyone self serving while we're closed. Yes, that's a great question. Um, you could always remove the milk bibs that are in those shuttles just as easily as they're put in. They could be pulled out and just put back into the refrigerator at the end of the serving day so that nobody accesses them during the day. Um, and I will look into seeing if there are other ways to lock the machine or have it so that nobody else can use it when you aren't using it. Great question, Patty. And looks like that's the same question that Robin asked at the end. Can the machines be turned off when the cafeteria is not serving? I will double check on that for you guys. And um, you're welcome to reach out to me directly, or I can send you guys an email as well. Last question here. Will next year's timeline be the same, though? If schools don't get their equipment until the fall, they have to have cartons to start the year. Yes, understandable. Understandable. So, um, I think, so this is from an anonymous, I'm not sure who's sending this, but I would encourage you to reach out to me directly and we can talk a little bit more about contracts. We don't have the plan right now for when this will open up again next year. Right now, this is our one time. Um, so let's let's connect directly and and see what we can work out. Great questions. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. It looks like we've gotten through all the questions. They were all awesome. Thank you guys for your interest in bulk milk. And please feel free to reach out to me directly, like I mentioned, um, at bulkmilk at chefandfoundation.org. And I look forward to your applications, questions, comments, and wishing you guys all a fantastic summer. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.